Hello. So I've recently acquired this rather lovely Irish bazooki from uh, Toman or Thoman, whatever you want to call it, over in Germany. Um, it's made by Hora or Horror. I've no idea how to pronounce it, but it's a Romanian brand. Now the bazooki was originally a Greek instrument that was brought over to Ireland in the 1960s by Johnny Moynihan of Sweeney's Men and popularised by Johnny Moynihan, Andy Irvine and Donald Lunny. Uh, the latter two played in the band Planxty. Now a lot of factories in Europe who make bazookis insist on sending them out of the factory tuned to GDAE, like a mandolin. Um, in Irish music, bazookis are tuned GDAD and also they're not tuned in octave pairs on the lower two courses, the lower two sets of strings. They're tuned unison, like the top two. Um, I'm going to remedy that. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need to file down the saddles here to make room for another thicker string on the, um, the lowest and the second lowest course here. And also, I'm going to have to file out the nut. I'm also not a massive fan of the action on this instrument at the moment. It's a bit too high for my liking. So we're going to try and get in through this quite elaborate sound hole here. Um, if I can get through there with an Allen key and tweak the truss rod, adjust the relief of the neck, and then hopefully we'll have a, a very nice playing and nice sounding instrument after that. So here's a bit of me playing the bazooki, strung in octaves on the lower two courses. I'm going to come back after that, after I've done the conversion, and you'll hear it in unison, and hopefully there should be a noticeable difference between before and after. It should sound a lot fuller, a lot more rounded, resonant, just a much nicer, fuller sound that's more suited to playing Irish music. I'm recording here through an Audio-Technica pencil condenser mic, and I've got an SE instrument reflection filter as well here. So the sound that you will hear coming through your headphones, your speakers, your TV, whatever, will hopefully be quite a clean and accurate representation of the sound with minimal room noise. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so first off, as the action's quite high up until the 12th fret, that indicates to me that we need to tighten the truss rod as the neck's slightly bowed. So to do that, you need to get down into the sound hole. Then you'll just see the end of the truss rod there. And I need to be able to get my Allen key down into that hole and give this a turn to the right to tighten it. Because the bridge isn't fixed, it's not glued down. As soon as these strings come off, this is going to slide all over the place. So I need to measure the distance between the bridge and the tailpiece for an easy reference when I come to stick the strings back on so that I don't lose the intonation. I'm also going to have to file down the groove here in the saddle to accommodate the unison set of strings because obviously the octave strings here these ones that are an octave up are obviously much thinner, so the groove's gonna have to be widened ever so slightly so that a string of this thickness will be able to sit comfortably in the groove and not slip out. And the same thing applies as well to the nuts. As you'll see, the groove in the nut here is much wider for the thicker string, so the octave string is gonna come off and I'm gonna have to file this out as well to accommodate unison strings on the two lower courses. And one final adjustment I'm going to have to make is to take the saddle here out of the bridge and file it down ever so slightly so that the action 
above the 12th fret is lowered. You can't really do much about that by just adjusting the truss rod. So anything up this end, then you know the bow is going to affect the height of the strings, but beyond the 12th fret and certainly where the neck's glued into the body, that's not going to make a shred of difference. So um, yeah, let's see how it goes. So on the base side here, we seem to have a height of four millimeters. On the treble, let's have a look. Two millimeters, okay. So we know what our angle is. Let's get filing that. So I've taken the saddle out and lo and behold, the piezo pickup magnet is inside the bridge. So there's a wire running from that to the circuitry inside. It's actually keeping it fairly well positioned so I don't have to worry too much about it sliding around. So that makes everything nice and easy for me. So as I've run out of sandpaper, what I've ended up doing is sticking the saddle in the vise leaving one millimeter sticking out the top all the way across and then just going at it with the file. So that means as an equal height of one millimeter has been taken off the bottom of the saddle, the angle on top of the saddle has been preserved. So the strings will still all sit correctly when you stick it back into the bridge. Now, even before I've tightened the strings back up all the way, I can already see that we're still way too high up here at the 12th fret and beyond. So that's not an issue with the truss rod. It's an issue with the saddle, so I think we need to take another millimetre off and then pop it back in and see where we are at that point. I think that's feasibly as low as we can go on the bridge saddle. I'd be worried if I shaved any more off the bottom that we wouldn't have enough clearance across the bridge for the strings. So, second time lucky. I was right. If I'd have gone even a fraction lower, on this treble side, these two strings would have had severe trouble clearing the height of the edge of the bridge there. As you can see, they're only just lifting over it, so that was close. So after some serious filing, the strings are now sitting a mere two millimeters above the 12th fret. So that's much more comfortable for me to play. I think we're getting there. And on to nut slots. So I filed down the bottom groove here in the nut to accommodate another thicker G string that now fits in both. I probably won't have to do it with the uh, D slots as this narrow one already seems to accommodate the thicker string. So uh, probably won't have to do anything with that. We'll see where we are when we restring it. Uh, I've put some tape down here just to protect the zero fret when I'm filing down the nuts. So I've used this cheap little file set off eBay that I found for about 3.95. I just went at it very lightly in this slot to widen it out and it seems to have done the job. The final task is to file the saddle slots so that the low G string can sit comfortably in both and won't slip out when you're playing. I've already filed down this one here so that this sits nicely in there, nice and secure. I need to do the same now with the D course. So as you can see, there's a bit of a difference between this one and this one. That's much narrower. So if you put another low D string in, it's gonna slip around. We need to widen that a bit. Then I think we're done after that. Okay, so I hope you can hear the difference there. I certainly prefer the sound. Now I've strung the bazooki with unison strings. I use these Daddario J81s or EJ81s as they're called now. 11 to 40 gauge, slightly thicker gauge than was on here previously, uh, which is obviously 
made a bit of an impact, a bit of an improvement to the tone anyway. But I think you'll agree, if you compare the two clips, there's uh, more volume, it's much more full-bodied, a nice rounder sound strung in unison rather than octave. As it turned out, I did have to file out both slots in both lower courses on the nut to accommodate the strings as they were slightly thicker. So um, just bear that in mind. If you're gonna buy this particular bazooki from Foman, the Hora Irish concert bazooki, it'll come with strings that are quite light. And if you wanna go for better tension and better tone, you're gonna have to do a bit of manual work here. And hopefully this video has helped to explain a lot of that. Anyway, I've been Alex Markham. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in finding out more about my band, look up Shaft of Steel. On the album that we're currently making, I'm going to be putting down a fair bit of bazooki and some mandolin on one of the tracks. So stay tuned for that. See you later.